Hi, I'm George. You can change the colors in a picture easily by using hue saturation right here. Just change the hue and that changes the colors. But notice that changes all the colors as you move this across. I'll show you how you can change just one color in a picture, just one color range in a picture easily using replace color. And it looks something like that. And if you like this video, hit that like button, click on share, click on subscribe, and check out my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. Link for that's right down there in the description. And let's go ahead and see how this is done. And I'll just delete these two layers while I'm at it. Get all those gone. There we are, back to the original. Now, whenever I do this kind of change or adjustment on a picture, I always do it on a copy of the background layer. So right click where it says background and choose duplicate layer, choose OK, and work on that copy. Two reasons for that. One, it protects your original, and two, if I want to keep some stuff like these stick in here, which will change color, I can then just use a layer mask to show the original from the background layer. So really easy to do. For this, we'll be using replace color, and that's up here under enhance. Come down to adjust color and replace color right there. And that gives you this dialog box. There's a few things in here. Notice at the top here, we have a little color picker tool, add color, subtract color. If you ignore this right now, there's a fuzziness section. This shows you what has been selected. And then down here is where you can adjust that or change that color. So first thing is to take the eyedropper tool and just click into the mid-range colors someplace. You can see here, we now have a lot of those shown. You can show more just by pulling the fuzziness up, but this brings in other colors that you don't want as well. So I'd leave that fuzziness down pretty low to begin with. Let's go over here and grab this eyedropper. This is the add to the selection eyedropper tool. And then click in areas that didn't show up over here. So you look over here, see what didn't show up, and see if it's a color you want, like right up in here. And just click around in those color areas, and you can add those in to your color selection. Now some of the whites in here are not going to be working very well for us anyway, but I think we're pretty good there. That's a nice selection. You can then adjust your fuzziness to clean that up or not. I'll leave it about like this. We'll change all this stuff. We'll fix all this stuff with a layer mask. That's the easiest way to do that. And I'm looking for a good contrast in here. And somewhere around there looks pretty good, although I am getting a bit of that blue in there that I don't want. But again, we can clean this up. Okay, now come down where it says hue and simply move your slider like this. You can then change that color of the area that you selected in here using these eyedropper tools. Let's find that blue-green. It's kind of purples and blues over here. Let's go to the other side, and there we go. And whenever you change a color like this on a natural object, try to find one that looks realistic. Like, that doesn't look too realistic. It's kind of weird looking. Go a bit more to the right-hand side. That doesn't look good either, but somewhere in here looks pretty believable. So I think that's a good spot. And it can control your saturation down here, more saturation or less saturation. Sometimes this will help. See with the lightness. But I'll just leave that as is. And I think we're pretty good in here. A couple little spots right here. So if you see some of the old color poking through, you can come in and grab that section with the eyedropper even after you recolored it. And I think that's looking real nice. Choose OK. There we go. And there's a few things in here. I want to clean up this background stuff. I want to have that the original color and not the new color. And also notice that the stick has changed color. We need to fix that. So for that, let's make a new layer mask. Just click the layer mask button. There it is. And then on your paint over here, left-hand side, make sure that black is in foreground because we're going to be painting black on here. Black hides any of the image that will then show through the original image in behind. Go up here to the paintbrush, and right now I'll set this at a bit higher brush. I like using a soft edge brush most of the time. There we go. And let's come in and just paint over those areas. These lights are, some of the lights are going to be blue, and that's okay. Some of the lights are going to be more yellow, and it looks better if you actually have a difference in color back there from the foreground. So I really want to do these things. It looks like it's been colorized that way if the background is a different color. And just work around and check all these areas in here. Again, some of these will stay that color and some of them won't, depending upon what the original color was back there. I think that's pretty good. Just a few more things right down here and right up in here. And you can see over here in the layer mask that I'm painting in these areas in black and it's showing through that color area on the background layer. Let's not take care of this stick. Now right in here, it's pretty easy to do. I'm just going to paint over it like that. Just do this by hand, and we can just paint that out. For that, I'll zoom in. It takes a little bit of a steadier hand for this. If you want to, you could make a careful selection around this area in here, and then fill in that selection. There's a little bit in here that didn't quite get colorized. Since we've already done the color change, we can't fix that that way, so I'll take care of that in just a bit in a different manner. But for now, let's just do a quick lasso right around here using the polygonal lasso tool. That's all we need. That's mostly because of that sharp corner right up there. I would just paint this in, but I can't paint into sharp corners. 
So I'll use this tool instead. Now we'll just get clear around the claws as well here. Just work around, take your time whenever you're using a tool like this. Just do a click, move your tool, do another click, and it should go pretty fast. If you click too fast, this will collapse the selection and you have to start that over again, so you don't want to do that. If it's in a real shadow area, you can just let that stay in the selection. The shadow is going to be black no matter what you do, so we're okay there as well. And I'll work around here. And we'll only go down as far as we get into that area that we've already fixed on the stick. And again, fairly straightforward process on this one. Work around, just take your time. Don't be too rushed on this one, or again, you will tend to collapse your selection. Now, once this is done, we can then paint right over that whole section in there very quickly and easily using the same paintbrush tool. And it will just stay inside of the selection. Okay, out here, up to there, and we'll get the top side, which has less detail, so this will go faster for us. And you want to paint just right on that edge. You want to stay as much on the edge as you possibly can. If it's a little bit of a shadow in there, you can go a little ways into the shadow because it won't show. And then just do a nice clean little selection like this. And we're just about finished with this piece. As you can see, pretty fast once you get used to doing this technique. The whole real trick is just not to click too fast and collapse your selection. All right, there is the beginning point. There's a selection. Back to our paintbrush tool. And I'll just paint right on the layer mask. There we go and that changes that back over to that nice yellowish color. Okay, Control D to deselect. And let's now see if we can fix this area. The easy way here is just to do a little bit of fast clone stamp tool in there. Getting pretty close on this. Here's a clone stamp tool. I need a real small brush. So I'll use the left square bracket and just bring the brush size down like that. Make sure you're on the bird side of the layer. Just double click over here. Look for your light blue outline. And then take the Alt key and click in the part you want to copy from. And then just click over the part you want to take care of. It'll take just a few of these to come in here and repair those few spots. Pretty easy actually. Because of that feather texture, this will blend right in very nicely. And should go pretty fast. Just standard photo retouching stuff at this point. And there we go. A little bit of cleanup over here. Notice how I am re-grabbing frequently and always looking for the best match for the area I'm trying to paint into. And just work your way around and you'll be done pretty fast. And there we go. I think that looks real nice. A little bit right over here. Real zoomed in to see if there's anything else in here that's a problem. I think we're going to be okay though. Yeah, it looks like we're just fine. Okay, that's looking very good. That's now back to full screen. That's all fine. Now, we do have this faded background. This is pretty faded back in there. It'd be nice if, if I was darker can look like this. And we can do that with an easy adjustment layer. Go up to layer, come down to new adjustment layer, and you want the levels control right here. Don't check that. We'll use it for both layers. And then look at the left hand side. You see all these blacks in it. This is the dark side, the black side, right is your white side, not much over here. There's all these big lines. That's this whole area in here. And you want to take the black point, move the black point into those dark parts of the picture, just like that. Just bring them in and that darkens down that background. It's kind of a toss-up as to where you want to be exactly. I want to keep a little bit of this detail down here if possible, so you don't want to go all the way up and block that out. But I want to darken it down as much as I can and still retain a bit of that background detail. And I think right about in there looks pretty good. Close that out. Let's now check that out. Here is our before and here's our after. And if you like the video, hit that like button, click share, click subscribe. Make sure you check out my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. Link for that in the description, and I'll see you next time.